Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Just doing another Faber-Castell review today. I've uh, been very uh, lucky to have a look at a number of Faber-Castell products over the last little while. I think they're uh, really wonderful. I've been a big fan of the brand for a, a number of years, even before my fountain pen uh, days. Faber-Castell was a brand I used to use for uh, writing pencils and uh, general sort of stationary bits and pieces. Uh, and in the last few years particularly, I've become very fond of their fountain pens. The fountain pen I'm looking at today uh, is one that I think is quite interesting. And I've shown a version of this on my channel before in a comparison with another pen. Um, and the pen is, in fact, this. This is the Neo Slim from Faber-Castell. Uh, and this is the black version. So I'm going to run down uh, the features of the pen. Um, you don't need a history on Faber-Castell. They're one of the biggest brands in stationery items and pens and pencils, all that sort of thing in the world. Um, Tons of information around, so let's just look at this very nice little pen. So starting at the very top of the pen, on the top of the cap is that little dimpled, uh, you know, sort of... I, can't, I don't know if that'll show up, but like the end of the pen is they've got this little like dip in it, which is mirrored in the bottom of the pen as well. Uh, and it's a feature that you find on a lot of pens like here on the, the base of the loom. Uh, there's one of those as well from Faber-Castell. It's a, it's a nice little feature they sort of have running through a number of their pens. A spring-loaded uh, clip there, uh, which is rigid but very usable. You get the branding on the pen there, Faber-Castell, since 1761. Uh, and the pen is cylindrical right down through the uh, centre of the pen there, right to the end cap where you get a little bit of a, like a slightly slimmer section where it posts. And then, of course, that little dimple on the end. The pen is all black apart from the, the branding. Um, it's a sleek-looking pen and uh, obviously a very slim pen. It's called the Neo Slim. Um, if we uncap it, it snaps to uncap, and you get this very strange little section. <laughs> like, it's a very odd little thing, and there's a few other Faber-Castell pens that have this as well, like the Ambition, for instance. Um, and then you get the black nib. Now, the nib on the Neo Slim is quite interesting. Um, it's a lot like the, the uh, nib on the right ink, uh, but it is different from the nib, say, on the, once again, I'll show you the loom here. Uh, on the loom, it's a smaller nib, obviously slimmer, but uh, it's got a very interesting sort of profile, that sort of um, little dip down on it, uh, and of course a unique feed for that. Um, but it's a nice nib, it's actually got like some really nice characteristics, and for, this is a fine, and of course in this model it's blacked out, um, it's got some really nice features. Um, this is a international standard cartridge converter pen. It comes with a uh, convert a cartridge. Sorry, no converter. Uh, and I've just put the cartridge in there. You can see that like there's no like they've they've literally geared this to be as slim as possible. So there's you know it's a slightly odd looking pen underneath at the barrel, um, but you can fit a cartridge in there, and I think there's room, I don't know if it's in there, but there's room for a second cartridge, or a long cartridge, or a converter. Um, so it's really handy, and I think it's a, obviously a pen like this is designed for, say, um, being slipped into a notebook, or, you know, um, if you've got smaller hands, a, a, a slim pen like this is really nice. Um, there's lots of applications for a pen of this size. If you're into big pens, this is not going to work for you. Uh, this is a, a very slim pen, but it is a good length. Uh, you know, it's fairly sort of decent length there, and of course it does post, and it posts well. It clicks to post, so it's nice and secure, uh, and it doesn't sort of terribly back weight the pen. There's a slight shift in the balance, um, but that's perfectly um, expected. So with this section, what's interesting is because that is a very small section, and it is very slim, I generally find myself holding it over um, the uh, over the little dip down onto that there. Um, and it's not uncomfortable. Like In fact, actually, it gives a nice little bit of sort of purchase on the pen there. Um, it's this like little couple of little steps down where it, obviously where it caps, and it's quite comfortable. It's a, it is it is a slim pen. It does remind me of using, say, some like ballpoint pens and things like that. Uh, but there are, are a number of pens on the market that sort of serve this purpose. Uh, and I'll show a couple of those in just a minute. Um, but no, it's a nice secure pen posting, uh, and it's a comfortable pen. Um, as I said, the nib is unique. Um, that unique profile, uh, but it comes in a range of nib sizes, extra fine, fine, medium, and broad, uh, and 
the actual pan itself comes in a couple of different versions. There's a stainless steel, uh, more sort of standard version, and both that it has a shiny version and a matte version uh, of the stainless steel. And then there is the black version, which is the, this is the all blacked out version. And there's also a black rosé version, which has um, a rosé clip, a rosé section, and it has a steel, like chrome colored nib. Uh, these are nice pens. These are not fancy pens. These are unassuming pens, but it definitely, definitely serves a purpose. And the line also actually comes with a roller ball and a ballpoint pen as well, which are equally as useful. The pen is metal. It's made of a like a lacquered uh, metal. Uh, and my concern obviously is that the, you know these finishes do chip um, and scratch. But if you are using this as a traveling pen, as a pen that is moving with you, that is something that you can, you would expect with a pen like this. Um, so yeah, look, it's a, it's a nice pen, it serves its purpose, it's not going to be for everyone, it will be too slim for some people, um, but I quite like it and I quite like, you know, in terms of these slimmer pens, I think this is a nice option. Let's look at a couple of comparisons now. So first, just to show the size of this, here is the Lamy Safari. So you can see it's not actually a short pen, it's a good length, like it is actually a pretty decent length pen. Um, it is just very slim. And if we uncap the pens, um, it's a little shorter than the Lamy Safari, that's okay. Uh, and when we post the pens, I think this is really where the slim actually is at its best, is in the posted format. Um, you can see it's still a little bit shorter, but it's a really, really solid length. It's just, as I said, it's quite slim, uh, and it doesn't have a defined section like a lot of other pens. So, you know, if you wanted to hold it further back, uh, you can. It actually gives you a really nice length from the page because there is no sort of set length place to hold it. If you're holding it right down here, then you are quite close to the page. But if you hold it further back, you actually do get a pretty decent length from the page, and then you've not got anything to sort of worry about, like in terms of threads or steps, step downs. Um, it's very comfortable. A couple of pens similar to this that I want to look at. Firstly, uh, oh, I'll quickly show this. This is the matte stainless steel version of the pen. You can see it's got like a, a chrome clip and you know end cap and things like that. Um, but it is a nice sort of matte, almost gunmetally bronzy sort of steel color, which is quite nice. A couple of other pens I wanted to show this next to. Firstly, I've shown this comparison before. This is the Lamy logo. Uh, fountain pen, uh, another very slim fountain pen um, with a you know small section uh, and a uh, you know typical Lamy nib posts and you know securely on the end there. Um, it's a very similar pen, and I've actually done a video that uh, shows these two pens next to each other. A couple of other pens I think that are worth uh, comparing it to are like the Diplomat Traveler. Um, and also just you know in, in a lot of ways, something like the Muji fountain pen. Now the Muji fountain pen is a pen I carry with me almost daily. This lives in my art kit. Um, I love that little, you know, textured grip section there. These are pens that work well if you have smaller hands or uh, putting them in like a slim notebook or, you know, in a little pen loop on a diary or something like that. They're handy uh, to have. They're nice pens. They all write very, very well. These are pens that go with you. Um, so interesting pens to look at alongside the Neo Slim. So the dimensions for the Neo Slim, capped, it's 140 millimeters. Uncapped, it's 122. So sort of quite a, a nice sort of decent length. Posted, it's 156. As I said, this is a nice way to use this pen. It keeps it all sort of contained. And if you're holding it further back, the balance is absolutely fine. The section is about 8.5 millimeters, so it is slim, but usable. The weight of the pen is 21 grams, so it's not a light pen, which helps because it is a smaller pen in the hand. For it not to be too light does mean that, you know, it, you still feel it in your hand. 14 grams of that is in the body of the pen and seven is in the cap. So when you post it, you are putting a third of the pen weight on the back, uh, but I don't think that's too bad in this situation. So let's do a writing sample, and here I have my Clairefontaine paper. As I said, I'm using the cartridge that came with the pen. The pen does come with a cartridge, not a converter. 
always an issue. So we have the Faber Castell Neo Slim, and that is a fine steel nib. And the ink is just the Faber Castell. blue cartridge that came with the pen. So let's have a quick listen. So you can hear this is not the smoothest nib. It's definitely definitely not scratchy like it's just feedback but the pen writes really well it's super reliable let's just do some quick writing so the only thing we kind of notice occasionally is that like it there's a slight like, little bit of ink starvation perhaps um, it's just because it's not a particularly wet nib, it is quite dry. Um, and that's both, that can also be a bit of a pro on a pen like this. Let's just quickly do reverse. It's actually not too bad. Um, it's a very rigid nib, like rigid, rigid nib. Um, also that design does not lend itself to, that profile of the nib it does not lend itself to flex. Um, <clears throat> it is not, this is a dry writing pen. But as I said, that can be a pro. If you are using this as a traveling pen that sits in your, um, you know, your notebook or whatever the case may be, having a pen that doesn't gush everywhere uh, means you can write on more kinds of paper. Uh, you know, you, this will perform well on lower end, you know, more affordable paper that is not designed for fountain pens. Um, it still lays, lays down a nice line of ink. You can still, still see the color quite nicely. Um, it just is not the wettest pen on the market. Um, and that feedback will be a bit much for some people. Um, it's not an issue for me because the pen isn't scratchy. If the pen was scratchy, I would have an issue with it, but this is just feedback. It's just like you feel it on the page. Uh, that's okay. So let's talk some pros and cons now for the Faber-Castell Neo Slim. Starting with the cons. Um, firstly, the pen doesn't come with a converter. I think, I know that Traditionally, uh, pens used in schools in places like Germany use cartridges, which is the, and that's why it is the main form of ink delivery for a lot of these pens. In the Australian market, in the US market, there is a more, there is a leaning towards using bottled ink. You can get converters for this, but it will be an extra cost. Uh, so just something to be aware of. Um, but as I said, I'm using the blue cartridges that came with it. It's absolutely fine. You can refuel the cartridge or you can choose to use cartridges if that is your desire. The other issue is that uh, it is a, like because it is a slim and smooth pen, the grip will not be for everybody. Um, it's fine, like it's not shiny, it's just smooth. So it's not gonna be slick. Uh, you're not gonna find yourself slipping around on the pen, uh, but there isn't like, a lot to sort of grip onto. The other thing to talk about now is the price. This is, um, as I'm doing this review, the Australian pricing is still unclear. Um, so I will put that in the description uh, below when that's available. Uh, but the to put it into context, this pen costs around the 50 US dollar mark. So it's not a super cheap fountain pen, but you are getting a pretty decent pen for that price. Uh, and particularly if you are after a pen that fits these sorts of dimensions and this sort of use. The pros of this pen, the portability of it, like the convenience of traveling with a pen like this. As I said, putting it in the, like a lot of those leather pen loops on notebook covers just do not hold big pens. A pen like this will fit perfectly if you're putting a pen into your purse or even into your pocket. You know, this is a pen that actually is very convenient. The build quality is great, like really, really, really good. Um, it's solid. It's like that clip is strong. Uh, the ca the capping feels secure. The posting is secure. You are, It's an all metal pen, so it's going to be protected. The anodization or the lacquer might chip. 
that is something that you know you have to be aware of particularly on a black pen as well it'll show up um, I've not had any yet in the weeks I've been using it I haven't been uh, taking this sort of too roughly uh, but they're still been traveling around with me and you know with me and it's pretty good um, so the other thing that I love about this pen is just that sharp look, like this all black version for me is beautiful. Um, I am a big fan of, um, you know, sort of black stealthed out pens, like just even here next to me right now, I have the, you know, the Retro 51 stealth fountain pen. Um, and so I think these are a really nice looking pen. Uh, so I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of Faber-Castell and I'm a big fan of the Neo Slim. I think it's a really nice pen. Um, in this sort of market, in this realm. Um, so something to look at if you are interested. Um, I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Uh, please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me on any of my videos here or drop me an email, which is listed down below. Um, if you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, uh, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.